on today's episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Grant the Nasty. I should go write that down <laughs> then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Grant the Nasty! Yo, Sayori! Looks like you're in a good mood today. <sighs> I'm still just not used to you being in the, cl in the club. That's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Ouch. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Ew, no thanks. Eh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Aori? <laughs> Why that all of a sudden? Yo, look at your face. No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Sayori <laughs> <laughs> nervously retrieves her coin purse. But when you're preparing for go for the festival, go for Yuri. There are some innuendos, and it's hilarious. All right, I'm gonna not do that. <laughs> she fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ooh, she's poor. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. You're not rich at all. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted a, an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry, badass. <laughs> so that only leaves the one option. Oh my god, that face! <laughs> I give up. Don't make me feel guilty, yee yee! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Nice. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggled still. Ah, I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Uh, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Don't grab the nasty to let me borrow some money. What the fuck? That's... Don't get me involved in like that, Sayori. Besides... You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Wow. Uh, did I just... You just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh... <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. <laughs> it doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. What the fuck? <laughs> Retribution. That! <laughs> Still coming from you, Sayori? I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Ugh. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Siori. <laughs> <laughs> oh what the fuck? Just yeah. Stopped here. Out of nowhere, something smacks Siori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was? <laughs> a cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Siori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution, <laughs> fucking moron. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. 
That's okay. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. <laughs> Sayori hugs she the cookie. She hugs the cookie. That's okay. a big cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Just gotta kiss it first. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. You're so good. <laughs> <laughs> Sayori suddenly clasped her hands over her mouth. It was poisoned. She's dead now. <laughs> I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, oh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate! Yeah? Why do you think I gave you that one? The cum flavored one. Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> oh, why does she always go behind her? Uh, <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Oh. Ah, jeez. I get it. Yeah, geez, I get it. Yeah, Rick. <laughs> what if I still... started doing Natsuki's <laughs> voice like, oh, like Morty? <laughs> Natsuki. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> do what you want to do. <laughs> Cookie's still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. <clears throat> Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <clears throat> Mouth full, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Uh. Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Same. I would cut a bitch if someone ate my cookie. Yeah, I haven't either. It's just a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Huh? You don't think she... she has a... Ha ha ha. I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Okay. Ah, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. They slide. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. God damn it. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh. Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Oh, so on earth. <laughs> wow, I, don't know, I thought this was a sci fi. <laughs> Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. Oh, that kind of period. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard that bell ring at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. <laughs> I don't really. It kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. <laughs> you should play something for us, Monica. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of my voice acting. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Uh, she's embarrassed. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? He's so, like, not committed. In that case... Sure. I won't let you down, Grant Dynasty. Oh here we go. Oh, Monica <laughs> smiles sweetly and breaks her back again. Now we take her to the hospital. Ah! Those are smiling sounds. <laughs> smiling sounds, alright. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the character to share once I'm ready. It's this chance. The chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. 
So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone's already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. It's a cookie. <laughs> Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Alright. Ah. I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed at something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. It's true. How did you know anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. Making dinner? No worries. Sweet. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the side of one of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is. Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Okay. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one box missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel, bro. <laughs> I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. It probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. Okay. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Grant Zanasti. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact... Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attires striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly Moses lack. <laughs> Don't just stand there. Ooh ah! <laughs> Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. He then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. He pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like oh that. Oh god, we're gonna do this again? Yeah. Oh, why's that? I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Uh, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. Mitsuki crosses her arms and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I wouldn't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Huh? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh... I am, but nothing's really happened yet, so I can talk at the same time. Looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. How do you talk and read? <laughs> Typical slice life affair. I kinda grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining, entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be plot? Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I don't know. I mean, I plot all over the place. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at an ice cream shop. But that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like, when they get into all their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen. That's really what makes it so good. There are so many touching parts. Touching parts? 
Ah, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait. What's that supposed to mean? Ooh, ah. Uh, I'm just gonna start making that noise. Ooh, ah. Natsuki gives me a little shove. I just mean that I haven't seen you at your full power. <laughs> Good, <see me. laughs> Good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well... Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah? Why does that matter? It doesn't, I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's... just a coincidence. I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like, I would ever get into anything because it's a manga. I feel bad for anyone that's impressionable. Ha <laughs> ha <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Yeah. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> we read on for a few more minutes. I finished a couple of chapters at this point. Uh, are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read like a crazy person? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't? What are you, an idiot? Um... That's not... Well... I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends, or are you like a loser that don't have any friends? <laughs> Could you not rub it in? Damn. Jeez. Ah, sorry. That would have been great. I'm gonna try Morty. I'm gonna. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that just sounds like Shaggy. <clears throat> Like, I could ever get my friends to read this! They just think manga is for kids! I can't even bring it up without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? It makes me want to punch them in the face! I'm not picking this girl again. Ah, uh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. An uber loser. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it up in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. I can't keep it up. <laughs> I can't even do it. <laughs> That is my Morty. <laughs> At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ah, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe. But at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, so. She's always constipated. Ha ha ha, you gotta poop. <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on, finger on one of the panels. A finger? A <laughs> finger. <laughs> Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Uh... I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter! Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga uh, with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile a little, a little to myself. Okay, everyone! Uh? 
<laughs> Are you all ready for with today's poems? Uh... Oh, come on. Could your timing be any worse? Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it looks like she just, like, with that transition, it looks like she just... Shit all over her. Like, fucking farted on Natsuki's face. <laughs> right. her, her hair is, like, flowing with the fart. Jesus. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there. Eh? <laughs> uh. Ah! Uh. Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. Alright. All right. Sorry. That's my boy. That's my love. <laughs> Guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? <laughs> <laughs> shits yeah, I'm aggressive. allowing that. <laughs> Sorry, shits aggressively. <laughs> Oopsies. <laughs> Don't you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but Monica just said... Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Uh, is that really alright? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. It wouldn't take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I'll kill you. Nice. By tomorrow? I only got part way through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this! But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then, I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. We oh my god, show. we got through all this again? Jesus Christ. We're gonna show. We're gonna talk with you. I like this one, Grant and Nasty. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. Uh -huh. ah! That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. <laughs> if it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you'd like in the first place. Yeah, me neither! Uh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, oh, you wanna write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, <laughs> but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. <laughs> and make a nice happy rainbow. Yeah, that's how it works. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Grant the Nasty! I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little bowls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Jesus Christ, this is long. <laughs> Sometimes a friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. 
Deeper and deeper my fingers go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who are not smiling. They are all shouting, bleeding, something. All I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why is there someone reading a Dr. Seuss book? Thank you. Holy motherfucking <laughs> shit. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot! I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kinda creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks! I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself in this way. It even helped me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! <laughs> Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! Ah, <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. I always always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, let's, let's go down the list. Okay, talk to all these fucking girls. Ziggy uh. <laughs> <laughs> reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me and then back at the poem. By now she must have read it more than once. Aren't you supposed to be bad at this? Alright, she likes my poem. Is that a compliment? N no, I mean, you know. And Suki struggles to find the word she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky with this one. Yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute. I mean... Uh-oh. I mean, well written. No, I mean... Ah, so that's how it is. My poem's cute. No, why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Natsuki shoves my poem back towards me. Uh, reading it again, I decided that it's not so great after all. It's too cute and doki doki. It would only impress, you know, girls who like that kind of thing. Uh, For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. For some reason? Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something, too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders, so that's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? The fuck? Uh, I don't know. I kind of... Yeah. I forgot about that one. <laughs> 
It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can't explain complicated issues with much simpler an analogies. Analogies. Yeah. <laughs> but it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But what I want, what I want, oh sorry, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Alright, let's talk to Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Ah. Oh. Mmm, this is pretty good, Grant Dynasty. Sorry. I just imagine this is what she would sound like, very sultry. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes, so I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That, that's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um... Well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an un- I'm too dyslexic, what is that? Unordinary? My strange tendencies, as an unordinary human, I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread my hungry curiosity, the raccoon my urge. Okay. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. That this. very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread. Fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto a newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement, a rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning, I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Cool. <laughs> this writing is on par with Anna Karenina, yeah. What the fuck is up with this? Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. 
Yeah, I mean, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Yeah, that's funny. So funny. Ugh. So funny right now. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Uh, she... she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... she's right! Scat porn counts. Uh, I mean... Did she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... well, that's interesting. To me, she seems like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. Plus... <laughs> But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. Ah ha ha ha, don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would have probably hated myself. Cool. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Monica. Okay, get ready for this one. All right. Hi again, Grant Nasty. That's right. <laughs> How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. You speedrunning this game? Yeah, I think I'm about to hit the world record. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ah ha ha, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my phone to Monica. Hmm, this is a piece of shit. Alright. I like it, Grant Dynasty. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> uh, a tease. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. That is an insult. And she's a good writer, too. So take this as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Every Maybe. time she moves, I, it looks like she's like moving to the side to, to fart. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and then she's done farting. <laughs> by by any farts. chance, have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? A? Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might have might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that could apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Tsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert. But you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the, w I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. <clears throat> Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise, the noise, it won't stop, violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless, load me, what? Save, Save me, me. Load me. Load me. What the fuck? Of meaningless, and then there's nothing. <laughs> Is she a game file? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, buddy. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the uh, kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with 
with my space on the paper. My space. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Yes, yeah, you've been listening to Marilyn Manson, yeah. She's a huge fan. <laughs> I see. Gotta watch out. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as physical expression of a feeling. Or a con conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Oh, uh, what? You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. What the fuck? I probably should save. I never save. Thanks for listening! Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh! Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay. That's great and all, but that doesn't help us. That doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Per um, Monica? Yeah? We're gonna... Yeah, we're going... <laughs> we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we also, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Uh, are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh... Well, I did. Did you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do anything like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori... I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. Hey, dummy. So, I'm sorry. Ugh. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. It's like poking your eye. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> and the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun! <laughs> That's right! And if those reasons and if it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Ugh. Ugh. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent, except for like the shitting noises. Yeah, they, they kind of shit all the time. The clothes See? are all very tight. <laughs> yeah, go for it, man. Yeah, do, do whatever. 
Diary looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Ugh. It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! <sighs> Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Uh, Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's, else's expectant feces, faces. I I guess I don't really have a choice. Ah, that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N n no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let me see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has, she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply motion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply, simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Tiori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! <laughs> ah, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, uh, I'll go next. Oh, uh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden! I guess I've made decisions. Yeah. We're just writing poems. That's all I've been doing. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. Oh, that's, that's my line. Oh, is that? Oh. <clears throat> you can do it, Yuri! I thought she was like... It... It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her book. Her quivering words transform into the sharp transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. This poem is full of twists and turns in its structure, and she enunciates with perfect timing. Unlike me. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Some people shit themselves. Yuri snaps back into reality, and gra glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. Let a man take over, right? Uh... I'm the first to start applauding. Yeah! Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. <laughs> That's what they all say. Uh -huh. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Oh. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Uh. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay! I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one is called My Meadow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Can't wait for <laughs> Tom's point. Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you 
you guys do it so easily? Ah, uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. The best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori so begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice <laughs> was made as a perfect match. This <laughs> I'll never get over it. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Ah, even Grant and Nasty liked it. Such a subtle voice. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It Just came out, out nicely, nowhere. Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. <laughs> it's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> Toad doing this. <laughs> just Toad doing this is killing me. Then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the pest before the festival, you know? The festival. The festival. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Huh. Don't make me go before Grant's a nasty. <laughs> it's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Grant and Nasty lower everyone's Ouch. standards a little before I have to do it. That's okay! <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Might as well just get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. So not exactly exactly confident in my own writing. It's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. Okay. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. Ouch. Okay. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because... Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. It's called Do It. <laughs> fucking do it. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. <laughs> well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem? <laughs> Sorry. I mean... Doing it in front of other people will be way easier. That's what she said. Uh, I can... I can put on whatever face I want for other people. Okay. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's a surprise, Natsuki! I think it would be the other way around for me. <laughs> well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case... You won't have to worry much about for, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. 
Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of a time what you'll be reciting. Geez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting all this effort into the club. It makes me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're like, we're 12 years old. <laughs> She's like uh, making that Suki almost eat her hair. Uh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> He's like choking. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for, if it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> He's making fun of her again. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Yeah! Look at you two, always going home together like that. <laughs> it's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's good. The, the skirt is flowing forward. Oh, <laughs> pussy farts. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, when you were talking about her making Natsuki eat her hair, it reminded me of my shits aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> ah, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Grant the Nasty. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. <laughs> I walk home with Sayori once more. Is Monica flashing the MC? If you think she is. <laughs> Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori! <laughs> Sorry, I was spacing out. Oh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... Uh, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So... Let's just say that one day, Natsuki has to walk home with you. Huh? Uh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <sighs> well, oh, uh, now we got a decision. Yeah. What decision should we make? Natsuki or Sayori, it's up to you. Uh, Which one do you like more? Um, Alright. Natsuki's kind of like too much of a little kid. <laughs> I was a little creeped out by that. Toad, yeah. Toad. We're, gonna, we're gonna stay with Toad. Cat toad! Says toad. <laughs> Sayori! You really think I would ditch you for Natsuki? <sighs> but she's so cute and fun to be around, and I'm just a toad. <laughs> Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Grant the Nasty. <laughs> you think about me too much sometimes. Natsuki would deserve it if she wanted to, so... Sayori, so, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry! Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. Hmm, maybe she knows something. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about, but I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. And again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time. Officers! If you have anything against me, then book me! Otherwise, as they say, get the hell out of my face! This is America! Land of freedom and law! A man is innocent until he's proven guilty. You have nothing on me! Oh, I got a lot of shit on you. 